and hasten towards the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The dhikr of Allah here is referring to the khutbah. The khutbah is a dhikr. It's a remembrance for us. So Allah is saying, Fas'aw ila dhikrillah. Hasten to the masjid, hasten to the khutbah, sit down and listen attentively to what is going to be shared with you today and use it as a means of drawing closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, now hasten, hastening towards Jumu'ah doesn't mean that you run or that you rush, right? That sometimes when we come in for Jumu'ah, we're in such a hurry that we end up parking horribly, we end up throwing our shoes you know, on, in random places without putting them in, you know, in the shoe rack. We run into the masjid and we jump over each other to try to get to the closest spot to the imam or to the front. What it means to hasten towards Jumu'ah is the spiritual excitement that we should have. Our heart should be attached to the masjid. And so as we're coming to the masjid, we're looking forward to it. <clears throat> we're not dragging our feet that now here I have to come for Jumu'ah and here I have to come and listen to a khutbah and sit for 30 minutes while I could have been having lunch or been, you know, just relaxing during my lunch break. Come with a sense of excitement. When you come for Jumu'ah, come with, you know, that psychological state that I am here for the sake of Allah with this hope to seek forgiveness from Him and to leave as a new person. And so when we look at the blessings of this day, from the blessings of this day is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also allows this day to be blessed for the one who leaves this world on this day as well. So the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa he teaches us that it is a good sign for a person to pass away on the day of Jumu'ah. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he grant us all a beautiful death and that he grants us a death on the day of Jumu'ah, on a blessed day, in a blessed month, in a blessed place. <coughs> So the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he mentions that whoever dies and whoever passes away on the day of Friday, Allah subhanahu wa taala will protect that person from the fitna and from the trials and the tribulations and the punishment of the grave. So a person who passes away on the day of Friday, we hope and we make du'a to Allah that he will be honored with that type of blessing of being protected from the punishment of the grave. But then also this day of Friday not only is it blessed in this world. Not only will it be a source of blessing for a person in the grave, it will also be a source of blessing for a person in Jannah, in the hereafter. Ibn Qayyim rahmatullahi alayhi mentions <clears throat> this hadith in Zad al-Ma'ad, where on the day of Friday, so the, the hadith mentions that every day Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increases the heat of Jahannam, except on the day of Friday. It's from the blessings of Jumu'ah, the blessings of the day of Friday, that even the inhabitants of hell are able to experience some of that blessing that instead of that fire increasing in intensity for them on that day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala leaves it as is. But also on the day of Jumu'ah, the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentions that for the believers in Jannah, every Friday there is a souq, there's a marketplace where you go and you can buy and sell. And this buying and selling isn't you know, uh, uh, connected or tied to having wealth or not. In Jannah, you are you're given whatever you desire. Whatever comes to your heart, whatever you wish, you're given in Jannah. There is no need to have something to give in return for what you want in paradise because we sacrifice that in this world. In this world, we left business. In this world, we left, uh, uh, you know, trading. In this world, we left, the, you know, the the what we would consider opportunities for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of Friday, during the Jumu'ah, in other opportunities, we disconnected from the world so that we could, dis so that we could connect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So on the day of Friday, there is a souq in the afternoon. And this souq, this marketplace, people will come, everybody will join. And there will be a wind, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, a breeze, a cool breeze, that will only increase everybody in beauty and, and, and make them more radiant in their nur. And so when they come home, the family members will say to each other, what has happened to you? You look more beautiful today. And they will respond to each other that they will say, no, this is from your blessings, that today you look even more beautiful. So you will have this honor on the day of Friday, even in, Jum even in, in Jannah, 
even in paradise. And the most beautiful of honors that we will be given on Friday, according to the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. And this is generally after the souq is over, after this marketplace is over. Every Friday, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will allow the believers to see the blessed face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Every Friday, we have a meeting with Allah. Every Friday, we see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is from the blessings of the day of Jumu'ah. So one who perfects the day of Friday in this world, and the one who honors the day of Friday in this world, and one who upholds the etiquettes of the day of Friday in this world, Allah will honor them in Jannah with His sight. Allah will honor them in Jannah with the beautiful nur and tranquility from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so this is why we use this day as not the end of the week, not a day where we can start, you know, unwinding and relaxing. TGIF, right? Thank God it's Friday. We're all ready for the weekend. We're all getting into, most of us are getting into what? Not the mode of obedience. Friday means it's time for what? So many times it's a time for disobedience. It's a time of disconnecting. It's a time of just relaxing and chilling and doing things that I couldn't do during the week because of work and school. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is teaching us and the Prophet is encouraging us that use the day of Friday as a new beginning for yourself. A new day, a new start, a new person. And allow it to be a means and allow it to be uh, you know, a source of blessings for you for the rest of the week. So when we think about the etiquettes of Friday, now the pinnacle of the day of Friday, the most important aspect of the day of Friday is the khutbah and the salah, salatul jumu'ah. This is why we're all here and may Allah accept it from us. But this is the pinnacle of it. And it is wajib, it is compulsory, it is obligatory upon all men, upon all people who are valid, who are mature, and who are men. Now the Salatul Jumu'ah from a fiqhi perspective is not necessary or wajib upon women. However, it's highly encouraged that on this day of Jumu'ah, a day that generally we have probably the only day that we have a chance to connect to the masjid and be at the masjid and listen to the khutbah and the sermon, it is highly encouraged that even sisters attend if they're able to. But it is only wajib upon the men. And it is not only from the wajibat of the day of Friday, but the Prophet ﷺ also says that the person who leaves the Jum'ah and leaves the khutbah without any valid excuse, it is a sign of hypocrisy. It's a sign of nifaq. And so we, we hear this hadith again and again. The Prophet, <clears throat> the Prophet ﷺ says that whoever leaves out three Jum'ahs without any valid excuse, Allah will place a seal on that person's heart. And when Allah places a seal on the heart of a person, there's nothing that can then penetrate that heart. Unless Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala removes that seal. Because this is the importance that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed on the day of Friday. So we don't miss it. We don't leave it out. We don't abandon it. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He makes it easy for us to uphold this obligation. It's not just an obligation, but it's a beautiful obligation. We come together as a community. We are growing together as a community. We're being uplifted together as a community, not individually, because we have moments for individual worship, right? Every salah, you could pray individually if you had to, but the day of Jumu'ah, the Salatul Jumu'ah, can never be performed alone. You can't pray it alone. It has to be prayed in congregation. It's, it's an ibadah, it's a worship that is a communal worship, where we come together, and this is what the Prophet used to encourage, that the Jumu'ah Salah and the Eid Salahs, <clears throat> they be prayed in the Jami'ahs. They be prayed in the larger masjids and larger gatherings. During the week you have the smaller Musallahs or masjids where you pray the daily Salah. When it comes to the Friday, then try to attend the Jumu'ah that has the largest gathering. Why? Because it creates a sense of community and a sense of unity as well within, our, within the Ummah. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he continues to mention the importance of the day of Jum'ah. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, in that verse that I mentioned very earlier, <coughs> in the beginning, فَاسْعَوْا إِلَىٰ ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ وَذَرُوا الْبَيْعَ That come to Jum'ah, hasten towards Jum'ah, وَذَرُوا الْبَيْعَ And leave your business, leave your work, leave your transactions, leave buying and selling. Why? Because this is the day of Jum'ah and the importance that Allah gives it to it. So it's not permissible. 
to engage in work. It's not permissible to engage in business and transactions during the khutbah is going on. A business owner is, you know, if you think about a business owner, the question may come, am I required to close my shop and come for Jum'ah? A business owner is not required to close up shop and to close their business and to come for Jum'ah. Rather, he himself must come for Jum'ah and leave someone else in charge who Jum'ah is not wajib upon. We ourselves must disconnect from what we're doing. If we're able to take lunch, then we come take our lunch break and we come for Jum'ah. And majority of us have the opportunity. For a lot of us, it is something that we are afforded as long as we make some effort and we request it. There may be some op occupations where it's absolutely, um, uh, you know, un they're unable to get off for Jum'ah and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make it easy for them. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He makes an opening for them. But for everybody else, for everybody who has the ability, whether you're in school or you're at work, if you're able to take time for Jum'ah off and come for Jum'ah, then it is mu a must for you to do that. <clears throat> so as we move on, we talk about the blessings of the day of Jum'ah, the Prophet wasallam also encourages us, because this is the most blessed day, make sure on this day you look your best as well. Make sure on this day you're taking out extra time to groom yourself. So in the hadith, the Prophet wasallam says, to bathe on Friday. And in some narrations, he mentions it's wajib to take a ghusl on Friday. But so the scholars mention that it is highly encouraged and recommended that a person bathes on the day of Friday. That this is the day that we dress our best. Yet the Prophet, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran, he says, Ya Bani Adam, khudu zinatakum inda kulli masjid. When you come to the masjid, dress well. On the day of Jum'ah, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa teaches us that we make sure that we come for Jum'ah we come for the salah, that not only that we are dressed well, that we were, you know, in, when we come for Eid, Eid salah, everybody's dressed well. There's a sense of excitement, sense of celebration. The Prophet is teaching us to make Jum'ah and create that sense of celebration when it comes to the Jum'ah as well. That dress well, make sure that you are putting the best perfume on, make sure you're putting your best clothing on, groom yourself, remove any unwanted hair, Clip your nails on the day of Jum'ah. You know, do all of these things on the day of Jum'ah. The Prophet ﷺ says in some of the narrations that whoever does these things and then comes to the khutbah and listens attentively and does not disturb others while doing so, the Prophet ﷺ says the sins of that person will be forgiven from the previous Jum'ah until this Jum'ah. So every Friday, you come prepared, you come to the khutbah, listen attentively, and you spend time in remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without disturbing others, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will allow that khutbah to be an expiation for your sins from the previous Jum'ah till this Jum'ah. And so we talk about the narrations where the Prophet talks about the rewards of walking to Jum'ah. But from the, <coughs> from the etiquettes of the Jum'ah, we have the necessary part of Jum'ah, which is the khutbah itself. The Jum'ah khutbah is a necessary, necessary part of the Jum'ah salah. It is something that one should make effort to attend and to be a part of. And so whoever does not come for the khutbah, and whoever intentionally continues to miss the khutbah, doesn't benefit from the reward of Jum'ah. They are deprived of the reward of Jum'ah if you are intentionally, or if you are not making an effort to try to attend the khutbah. And this is even if the khatib is not as engaging or boring. The wajib of the khutbah is still necessary. Just because the khatib is boring or he doesn't keep you engaged, doesn't mean that that wajib is lifted upon you. Doesn't mean you have an excuse to miss the khutbah and only come for the salah itself. A person who intentionally and without making an effort misses the khutbah will be deprived of the blessings of the day of Jum'ah and the reward of the Salatul Jum'ah itself. So as you come in, the Prophet ﷺ says, make sure while the khutbah is going on, there's no talking. There's no responding to the salam. You know, one of the things that we hear people do often is when they come into the masjid, assalamu alaikum, right? Loudly, right? Is that proper etiquette or not? We can have a conversation about that, but during the khutbah, one should not do that. And if one does say the salam during the khutbah, it is not wajib for you to respond to it. Someone sneezes, you don't respond to that sneeze. The Prophet ﷺ even says, if someone is talking, you should not tell them to be quiet. You yourself should be focused on the khutbah 
and not increase in, in the commotion and noise by telling someone else to be quiet. Focus on your own khutbah. And some of the narration, the Prophet used to tell the Sahaba, the one who comes for the khutbah, and while the khutbah is going on, plays with the stones. <clears throat> you know, the, the masjid of the Prophet it was gravel, it was, you know, it was dirt. It was in these plush carpets. So sometimes you start playing with stones and the Prophet says, the one who does that, faqad lagha. Their khutbah is null and void. Imagine a person who's playing with their cell phone during the khutbah. A person who's drawing things on their carpet during the khutbah. A person who's engaged in all of these random things during the khutbah. It'll null and vo uh, void the reward of the khutbah for us. And so, the Prophet wasallam. now a point that I'll mention really quickly is that if the khutbah has started and a person walks in, do they pray their sunnah, should they pray? The, scholar, <clears throat> the scholars mention that when a person walks in and the khutbah is going on, they should not perform any salah. Some narrations, the Prophet wasallam, he told the companions who walked in to pray tahiyyatul masjid, but to do it quickly and then sit down. So if a person is able to come to the masjid, they should, they should be here before the time and they should make sure that their sunnahs or the tahiyyatul masjid is done before the khutbah is done and avoid it while the khutbah is being given. This is from the etiquettes of the Jum'ah khutbah and the etiquettes of the, the Salatul Jum'ah itself. <clears throat> now the, the, reward of the, the, the rewards of the day of Friday as well. The Prophet, the Prophet ﷺ says, on the day of Friday there is a time where Allah accepts all of your du'as. Really quickly I'll mention two major opinions on this. The first opinion is the time from uh, the, between the two khutbahs, when the Imam sits down until the iqamah, that entire time, du'as are accepted. So this is why there's a gap. The Imam allows all of us to make du'a. This is a time where all of us should be asking Allah for whatever our greatest needs and desires are that are permissible in this world and the hereafter. And then, uh, the, during the second khutbah, this is why the Imam usually recites du'as. And during those du'as, internally, we should also be saying ameen to those du'as because it is a time of acceptance. The second major opinion about this is the last few moments of the day of Friday, which is basically before the Maghrib prayer on the day of Friday. Every Friday before the Maghrib Salah, whether it's 10, 15, 20 minutes, take out time to make dua during that time because it is a time of, the, of acceptance as the Prophet ﷺ mentions. The Prophet ﷺ also encourages us on the day of Friday that we recite Surah Al-Kahf. And he says that whoever recites Surah Al-Kahf on the day of Friday, it will be a nur and a light for them from one Jum'ah to the next Jum'ah. And as we conclude, I'll mention this last narration and we'll conclude. The Prophet وسلم, he teaches us the importance of coming to the, 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 the masjid on the day of Friday early. So the narration mentions, Every Friday, the day of Jum'ah, there are angels standing at the doors of the masjid who are writing down the people that are walking in. So everybody who's walking in, the angels are making a list and they're writing their names down. Whoever comes first, their names are written first and then they're making a list after that, whoever comes. Then he says, فَإِذَا جَلَسَ imam That when the imam sits to begin the khutbah, they close their scrolls, they shut their books, and they come. As we are listening here, the angels also are sitting in our gathering, listening to the khutbah. And so as, they, as the, uh, the imam begins the khutbah, they close their scrolls, and they come and they sit and they listen to the khutbah, as all of us are. And then the Prophet ﷺ gives an example in a parable. He says, the one who comes early is like the one who offers a camel to sacrifice. And the one who comes after him is like the one who offers a cow. And the one who comes after him is like one who offers a ram. And the one who comes after him is like one who offers a chicken. And then one who offers an egg. Now, the Prophet is using animals as an example because that is something that the Sahaba would understand. For us, <clears throat> for us to understand, the Prophet is saying the one who comes early, it's as if he's given $100,000 in sadaqah. And then the one who comes after that, as if he's given 10000 the one who comes after that as if he's given a thousand dollars. The one who comes after that as if he's given a hundred dollars. And the one who comes right after that as if he gave one dollar in sadaqah. And then the scrolls are closed. And while you are walking in during the khutbah, the angels are no longer writing those names down. So this is an encouragement for all of us that on the day of Jumu'ah, if we are able to, that we try our best to clear our schedules and to be here for the khutbah early 
to benefit from the blessings of the day, even if you don't want to benefit from the lessons and the advices of the khutbah, you come to benefit from the blessings of the day of Jumu'ah and the rewards from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for tawfiq. الحمد لله وحده والصلاة والسلام على من لا نبي بعده أما بعد فقد قال الله تبارك وتعالى في القرآن المجيد والفرقان الحميد بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم mentions to all of us that the day of Friday is the most virtuous of all days. So he sends, send salawat upon me on this day. Increase in sending salutations upon me on this day. For the salutations that you send upon me are presented to me on this day. The Prophet wasallam says, the more salawat we send upon him, wasallam, the closer we will be to him on the day of judgment. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us that proximity and closest to him. اللهم اغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم والأموات إنك سميع قريب مجيب الدعوات يا رب العالمين اللهم اغفر لحينا وميتنا وشاهدنا وغائبنا وصغيرنا وكبيرنا وذكرنا وأنثانا اللهم من أحييته منا فأحيه على الإسلام ومن توفيته منا فتوفه على الإيمان يا رب العالمين عباد الله رحمكم الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعيذكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروني اذكركم واشكروا لي ولا تكفرون اقيم الصلاه <coughs> Please turn the sofs and as we're straining the sofs inshallah ensure the cell phones are turned off a reminder that starting this Sunday we will have the adhan workshop with Sheikh Nasir inshallah so all the brothers and sisters who registered for it be mindful look for an email and those who have not registered please inshallah try to register as soon as you can inshallah we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept from us our ibadah and our worship, send salawat upon the Prophet, and ensure to make dua on this day, and recite Surah Al-Kahf. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حيا للصلاة حيا للصلاة حيا للفلاح حيا للفلاح قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله Allahu Akbar Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Manik Yawm Al-Din Iyaka Na'budu Wa Iyaka Nasta'in اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين بسم الله أرأيت الذي يكذب بالدين فذلك الذي يدع اليتيم ولا يحض على طعام المسكين فويل للمصلين الذين هم عن صلاتهم ساهون الذين هم يراءون 
ويمنعون الماعون الله أكبر <تصفيق> سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين إنا أعطيناك الكوثر فصل لربك وانحر إن شانئك هو الأبتر الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله there's a request for duas brother Aftab Khan's a brother-in-law passed away recently we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive him and to honor him and to make his grave in the gardens of paradise and to grant him genital for those without reckoning, and all of our loved ones who have passed away. Also, a brother Akif Rahman's uncle had a stroke. Brother Ubaidur Rahman, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant him complete shifa and a quick recovery. And may Allah grant shifa to all of our loved ones who are sick. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us and our families from, uh, from major illnesses and sicknesses. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. <clears throat> Inshallah, please be mindful that we have a second Jum'ah as well. So if we can, after our sunnahs, exit, and inshallah, leave so that the others can come in, inshallah. Jazakallah khairan.
السلام عليكم ورحمة الله الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاة حي على الفلاح الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أرسله بالحق بشيرا ونذيرا بين يدي الساعة من يطع الله ورسوله فقد رشد واهتدى ومن يعص الله ورسوله فإنه قد غوى لا يضر إلا نفسه ولا يضر الله شيئا إخوتي الكرام إن خير الكتاب كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم خير الأمور عوازمها وشر الأمور محدثاتها كل محدثة بدعة كل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار إخوتي الكرام أوصي نفسي وإياكم بتقوى الله كما أمر سبحانه وتعالى في كتابه يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا 
يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما فأسأل الله أن يجعلني وإياكم من الفائزين في الدنيا وفي الآخرة اللهم آمين وبعد My dear respected brothers and sisters, mothers and elders and little friends It is by the grace of Allah, the mercy, the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the creation that we have these chances A chance to get together, a chance to gather, a chance to pray, a chance to seek forgiveness, a chance to breathe another breath, a chance. And it's not just one chance, it's not a second chance, it's not a third chance. The way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala treats the creation with so much mercy is that we constantly have another chance. That if you messed up last week, you have all this time to think about it and to review And to say, I missed this prayer, I woke up late for that, I didn't do this, I could have rather done that. And this is a smart plan for every single one of us. It's a chance that we all need to take to revise and to review ourselves, to ask ourselves the hard questions. Where is the state of my faith? Where is my belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Many people might make a big deal out of the society in which we live and say that questions of faith are a result of over-information or blame it on social media or blame it on marriage statistics. or blame. We can use the blame game for any one number of ills, illnesses that are plaguing our community. But the idea of questioning your faith has been around since the beginning of faith. Since the moment Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam this concept of a hereafter, Jannah, Jahannam, reward and punishment, a day of judgment, miracles, prophethood, From the day that message came to the people, people questioned its validity. And so if you're questioning your faith, this seems awkward to have this khutbah in the actual message, right? Because you came, you made the effort to come. So it's impossible to think that if you're here right now, you're questioning your faith. That's really not true. Because every single one of us here in this room has at some point or will eventually question their faith. This is not said in a mocking way. It's not pointing a finger at anyone or calling somebody's faith weaker than another. But the true faith is one that has gone through that questioning. The true faith is one that has gone through those doubts and come out of it stronger. So we need, I'm encouraging it, We need to question our faith. And we also need to find those answers. The concept of forging a blade, making a strong weapon. You got to melt the iron. It has to go through that fire. It has to be tested so that it can cool and harden and do its job. Well, our faith is the same. If you're not asking yourself, why do I pray? If you're not asking yourself, why do I fast? Why do I believe in Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Why do I do this or why do I do that? If you're not asking yourself why, then it's a blank form of exercise. Your salah is nothing more than stretching bending over, putting your head on the ground and turning to the right and turning to the left unless you know why you are praying. Your sadaqah, your charity is just giving away money. It's reducing your bank account unless you know why you are giving that. The time that we spend learning our faith is a waste unless we know why We are learning our faith. And so questioning your faith is normal. 
In practicality, almost the entire nubuwa, the entire mission of the Prophet wasallam, was spent answering questions of faith. Otherwise, how would we, 1,400 years later, know anything about our faith? Unless it was the people asking questions of the Prophet wasallam. Ya Rasulullah, what is Jannah? Ya Rasulullah, what is Jahannam? Ya Rasulullah, what is Salah? Who is Allah? How do we know Allah? How can we interact? All of these questions that came about, somebody has already asked them. And somebody has already answered them. And so if we're asking the same questions, Alhamdulillah. Don't suppress your questions of faith. Don't suppress or don't let anybody talk down to you because you're wondering about Islam. One of the most beautiful things about our faith is that it is meant to answer questions, not suppress them. One of the most common themes I hear from brothers and sisters that enter into this faith, that take the shahada later on in life, is that when they have questions about accountability, questions about acts of worship, and they ask their religious leaders from other known faiths, those faith leaders would say, stop asking. Don't talk that here. Leave that. Don't concern, don't worry. Whereas in Islam, we say ask. And when you ask, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran, فَاسْأَلُوا Ask the people of knowledge if you don't know, because otherwise, how would you know? And so I am here to say today, from this pulpit, on this microphone, in this masjid, the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that if you are questioning your faith, alhamdulillah. So now there's one thing to question the faith and to recognize that blessing of questioning our faith. But you also have to do the work to get the answers. It's not enough to allow whispers and to allow environment and to allow uneducated people and to allow bad influences to answer those questions for you. When you have a question on your math homework, you don't go to the kid that's failing the class to ask them that question. You go to somebody who knows something about that topic. You go to your teacher. You go to the person who's top in the class. And you get an explanation, and then now you understand that concept, and now you then become a source of guidance for others. That is how this faith continues to spread and will continue to spread. So one of the top questions that I get in my position is, how do I know Allah exists? So much in our society and our environment is geared towards convincing us that there is no Allah is geared towards convincing us that everything that we see around us is a coincidence. Two atoms popped together and all of a sudden life began. How do I know that Allah exists? I cannot see Allah. I cannot hear Allah. I cannot experience Allah with my senses that I have capable to me. And so those questions start to dig and dig and, and snowball into bigger and bigger and bigger questions until finally the person is drowned. You can see Allah. You can visit Allah. You can hear Allah. You can be with Allah. Wait, how? The clear existence. Well, let me back you up a moment. If we're worried about the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because you are unable to physically experience smell, sight, hearing, touch, taste, this or that. How many of you have ever seen your great, 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 great grandfather? Do you know anybody who has? Do you know anybody who has seen that person? Can you even name that person? Do you know they existed? Yes. How? You're here. You had to come from somewhere. And so now let's apply that logic to the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
who tells us in the Quran and reminds us throughout the Quran, the spoken word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You want to hear, you want to listen to Allah? Here it is in the Quran. In a few moments, Shaykh Nasir is going to stand up and recite from the ayat of the Quran. That is the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, literally to your ears being delivered. It is your interaction. As the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says that the Quran is the habil, the rope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is your physical tangible connection with the creator of all of mankind you can hear Allah in a hadith the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam hadith qudsi Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us through the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam about the person who will be questioned on why did you not visit someone who was sick what will that question begin with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask that person why did you not visit me and so the natural reaction to that question is, Ya Allah, how can someone visit you? You are Allah, Rabbul Izza. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells that if you were to visit someone who was sick, you would have found me there. Why did you not feed me? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say. And so we will ask, Ya Allah, how can we possibly feed you? You are the one who feeds. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, Had you fed that person so or so, you would have fed me. We, look to your right, it's okay to do it, thank you, look to your left, that is a sign of the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We experience Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through each other. We are the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are, as Allah has determined, the Khalifa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Surah Al-Baqarah, إِنِّي جَاعِنٌ فِي الْأَرْضِ Khalifa. That's you. And so we came from Allah, and we will return to Allah. إِنَّ لِلَّهِ وَإِنَّ إِلَيْهِ رَاجِعُونَ how can you smell Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? How can you touch Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? How can you see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Look all around you. And then ask yourself the question, Which one of the signs of your Lord can you possibly deny? Was it not freezing cold a couple of days ago and now it feels like summer because there's a 40 degree shift? Who did that? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Were you not poor one day and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you the next? Who did that? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Were you not going through a hard time and then you made it through even stronger than you were before? Who did that? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so if I was to give in these few short moments advice on how do you keep your faith, number one, question it. Because without those questions, You'll be blind. Without those questions, you'll have no guidance. Without those questions, you won't wonder that who is this Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? You want to know who is Allah? فَلَهُ الْأَسْمَاءُ الْحُسْنَى Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has these gracious names that you can get to know Allah. When you are tired, you lean upon the strong, the strength of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you are weak, you rely upon the, the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you are sinning, you rely upon the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you are ill, you, you, you rely upon the health, the healing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you are are, are, are limited, you lean upon the limitlessness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَلَهُ الْأَسْمَاءُ الْحُسْنَى We have so many ways to interact with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't think for the, a moment that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created you as, 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 as a coincidence. You were put here for a purpose. Ask. Understand who is Allah, and that will give meaning to your prayer. Understand who is Allah, and that will give meaning to your fasting. Understand who is Allah, and why does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala deserve to be worshipped? I'll give you one example. Take a deep breath. That whole process of taking in air, 
your body being infused with the nutrients and elements that it needs, and then exhaling something that is totally useless to humankind. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did that. Everywhere you look, anywhere you go, whatever you do, is an example of the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All we have to do is look. I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to be aware of the greatness of Allah, the existence of Allah in and everything that we do and see and look and interact with. I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the answers to our inevitable questions. I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the strength to ask those questions and don't shy away from embarrassment or social stigma or somebody telling you that you're not allowed to ask. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would sit with the Sahaba specifically saying, do you have any questions? When the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was taught by Jibreel, it was done as a series of questions. Jibreel alayhi salam came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and asked the Prophet, Oh Muhammad, what is Islam? What is, what, is, what, is, what is submission to Allah? What is faith? What is perfection in faith? And the Prophet wasallam had to give answers. Let us continue to seek. Don't ever lose track of the path of seeking knowledge. Because knowledge is power. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم من كل ذنب فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله قال سبحانه وتعالى في كتابه إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد بعدد من صلى وصام اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد بعدد من قعد وقام اللهم صل على جميع إخوانه من النبيين وعلى سائر الصحابة والتابعين رضوان الله تعالى عليهم أجمعين اللهم اغفر لنا ذنوبنا وكفر عنا سيئاتنا وأدخلنا في جنتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم اجعلنا من أهل التقوى كما كما أمرتنا يا سبحانك في كتابه يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون اللهم اجعلنا من أهل التقوى ومن الذين يموتون على الشهادة أن لا إله إلا الله والشهادة أن محمد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم أعني على ذكرك وعلى شكرك وعلى حسن عبادتك يا أرحم الراحمين عباد الله رحمكم الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعدكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله يذكركم وادعوه يستجب لكم ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعوا فأقيموا الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الفناح قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله قل لا إله إلا الله استقيم وتراص واعتدل ويرحمني ويرحمه الله استو صلي صلاة مودعة الله أكبر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم 
الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعيد اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله اتقوا الله حق تقاتي ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون واعتصموا بحبل الله جميعا ولا تفرقوا واذكروا نعمة الله عليكم إذ كنتم أعداء فألف بين قلوبكم فألف بين قلوبكم فأصبحتم بنعمته إخوانا وكنتم على شفا حفرة من النار فأنقذكم منها كذلك يبين الله لكم آياته لعلكم تهتدون ولتكن منكم أمة يدعون إلى الخير ويأمرون بالمعروف ويأمرون بالمعروف وينهون عن المنكر وأولئك هم المفلحون الله سمع الله لمن حمده الله الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر <تصفيق> بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد إياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا
إن الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات كانت لهم جنات الفردوس نزلا خالدين فيها لا يبغون عنها حولا قل لو كان البحر مدادا لكلمات ربي لنفذ البحر قبل أن تنفذ كلمات ربي ولو جئنا بمثله مددا قل إنما أنا بشر مثلكم يوحى إلي يوحى إلي أنما إلهكم إله واحد فمن كان يرجو لقاء ربه فليعمل عملا صالحا فليعمل عملا صالحا ولا يشرك بعبادة ربه أحدا الله سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Just a couple of announcements. Inshallah, tonight after Salat al Isha, we will have a Quran recitation with Sheikh Nasir. On Sunday, we'll be having an Adhan training program. So, for the brothers that have already registered and signed up for it, you should be getting an email soon. If you haven't registered, please go ahead and register. But this Sunday will be our Quran training program. This is for boys age 13 and above. So, please. The Adhan workshop is this Sunday, inshallah. The Adhan workshop is this Sunday, inshallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put it within our hearts to donate generously to our Islamic foundation. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant rahmah, forgiveness, and mercy to all of those who have passed away and grant ease and patience to those whom they leave behind. Barakallahu feekum. Assalamu alaikum.